because I was born the last year of the war, so my whole life has been post-war. <laughs> I got into this shit is for women. Because all these guys had these chicks screaming at their feet. I thought, well, that, should, that looks like a good job. Wonder I never thought of that before. <laughs> we moved to Wales, Anglesey, and I was in a couple of local awful bands, you know, like Yar. I was just a little, little Richard was the sound, and then the Beatles were the songs. Those are my main influences, I guess. Then I went to Manchester, and that's where I started playing professional life. And then down to London in about, what, 60... Jesus Christ, I don't know, 66? Yeah, late 66, 67. And then it all went, wee, psychedelia. And I was that soldier. Out of his depth, really. <laughs> Did his best. But a little extreme. It's the best thing I can say about Larry, I think. It was a fraught relationship. <laughs> well, now I got fired out of all the other bands I was in, so I figured the only way I could stop being fired was if it was my band. <laughs> Yes, because the first year we were around, we got voted the best worst band in the world in the sounds poll. The only time that category was ever in there. And everybody in the world, in the critics world, said they'd be finished in a year. And I'm still saying, fuck you to them. That's, that's a, a big part of it, you know. The other part is I'm not trained for anything else. <laughs> Phil, Phil's great, you know, Phil's my brother, man, I and mean, Phil's my family. There's nothing I can say about Phil Taylor that's bad, you know, that I don't agree with. Whatever he did is fine with me, you know. Went through a long time with Phil, you know, and like I've seen Phil do things that you can only guess at in your wildest nightmare. <laughs> Clark and me didn't get along when he was in the band, but we got along fine afterwards, which is funny, you know. I mean, we did for the first couple of years, but then, I don't know, you know, bad habits catch up with people and their brains fry, you know. And I think we were both doing that. And so was Phil, certainly, you know, we were generally fried, so that's what happens. We became three poached eggs, you know. Please, please don't touch. I so much. Brian is one of the most wonderful guitar players you'll ever hear in your life. And he doesn't, you know. He just gets messed up all the time. And he, um, he doesn't live up to his own talent, and I don't know why. There's something going on in his head. Wurzel, he was my best friend in the band for ages. But, like, he didn't part well, unfortunately. It was a shame too, because I really, I really like words. Phil Campbell is a very unfortunate person, <laughs> in many ways. He's the longest serving member of Motorhead apart from me. And like Phil Taylor, his family is my brother, occasionally my sister. <laughs> and whatever he does is all right with me, you know what I mean? I think Ace of Space is probably still one of my favourite albums of all time. Peter was another one, so he got above himself, you know. Yeah. You know, they're a good laugh at the beginning, then they get weird, you know. I don't know what it is. I first got into Motorhead, it would probably be about uh, 1979. 
and uh, McFarlane Sandy McNair gave me a copy of Overkill album and uh, we went through kind of sort of these like, kind of mad early 80s summers with uh, Those of Speed Inside it and it was a sort of soundtrack really to kind of that time. <laughs> The music community is a great community. The the business is trying to split us all apart now. You have charts, 16 charts in the back of Bloody Rolling Stone, you know. And nobody in the world needs that many charts. There's music you like and music you don't like. That's the only kind of music there is. demanded artistic control. I will not have anybody in a suit telling me what I should play, no. you know, because that doesn't even, that doesn't even enter my head, you know, on any <laughs> time. When we were with Sony, right, this guy came down to the bloody studio with five of his bloody family to have a social evening with it, you know, like drop in on the band, you know, and I wouldn't let him in the studio. I said, fuck you, I don't come around your hospital and type for you, you know, don't come around while I'm working, you know, bugger off, you know. <laughs> Well, you know, at least Metallica were true to their roots. They admitted their roots, you know. And they said, like, they came down and played at my birthday party as well, you know. And they did several of our songs at my birthday party on stage. And they recorded them. And they did Diamond Head, you know, another influence. And I thought that was great of me, you know, because nobody else ever did that. You know, except I did with Slim Jim. We did a record of old rock and roll songs a couple of years back. But um, most, most bands, like we were on tour with Overkill once, and I said, um, somebody said to him, no, you got the name from Motorhead, one of our crew, I think. And the guy said, no, we never heard him. You know, you know, ha, you know. <laughs> I mean, Mickey, Mickey gets very enthusiastic about himself at times, but... We all have our moments. <laughs> we all have our moments. <laughs> a long time, maybe. So, you know, I mean, we've been together a long time now, the three of us. It's pretty well set in stone, you know. I don't see that we ever need to get anybody else. The band works really well. It's a good band, man. The plan is to try to finish this album off this year. Before we die of all day. And uh, then start touring next year. It's unusual. A good band is somebody comes on and makes you feel ten foot taller for an hour and a half, and, and like when you come out, your ears are ringing and you can't wait to be in one just like it. That's a good band, you know. It's something that makes your imagination run amok, you know. Not just something you tap your bloody foot to and wait till the song's over, you know. Lemmy, you're a really true legend to rock and roll. We need a lot more people like you around. I hope to see you in another 25 years, if we're lucky. But me and you have burnt a trail that we can't stop but the fire out now. So here's to another 25 years and keep on rocking Lemmy and Motorhead! Yeah! A lot of bands, they all say, thanks to the fans and all that, but I. For us, I think it's a little different, actually, because uh, this is really for real. And the good ones become our friends, too, you know. I mean, they, they come backstage on regular, a regular basis. They get in every show for free. Because, you know, they're worth every, every penny they spent on us, you know. They're worth it in gold, you know.